Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint these curtains blowing in the wind looking out at a relaxing ocean view. We're working on a 16 by 20 canvas today. It's stretched, primed with gesso, dried. Now I'm coming in and just wetting the canvas a little bit. Uh, this just helps to spread that paint around more evenly and overall it just makes it a lot easier to paint on. I've got a large blending brush here. Uh, it doesn't matter what brush you use, you just want something big enough to spread that paint around. Um, I'm using a bigger brush today because I'm working on a bigger canvas. I've got light blue permanent here, but you can use any colors that you want for your sky and you can make your background anything you want. This is just what I'm um, wanting to do today. I think this is something relaxing to look at. And I'm just coming in with a little bit of cadmium yellow mixed in with that blue, a little bit of white. I don't want it to be solid one color. I want to have those streaks in there in different tones, light and dark, sometimes more transparent and sometimes a little bit thicker with the paint. Okay, I'm not covering the whole canvas with that blue. I just want a large portion of it covered so that I make sure I've got that view of uh, the landscape out the window. Um, now I'm just gonna come in and make a window, just a simple box or rectangle. You guys can choose the size that you want yours to be. And I'm just doing this really loosely, I'm not sketching anything out or tracing or measuring. And this is just how I like to approach my paintings, but. It's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with uh, sketching it out or tracing something beforehand or measuring so just approach it however you guys feel comfortable with and just taking more black now I really want to make this look uh, 3d and really stand out and create that light effect so I'm adding a lot of dark here now it's never just straight black I've always got a little bit of something left in my brush I don't want to use um, I don't want the painting to be straight black anywhere just because I like richer um, tones. I don't like, I think black can be quite dull if it's just on its own. So what I will be doing is adding some beautiful magenta. Um, you can use any color you want to tint your black with, but I love this. And I chose this because that whiny color that I've made with the black and the magenta, that deep, beautiful color looks complimentary. Well, it is complimentary to the green. So we've got that green and black, uh, and it turned green when I mixed the cadmium yellow with the black. So it's kind of like a really dark green gold color that I made there. So I'm gonna come in and just completely cover in all these areas on the outside of the window. This is kind of obviously like the wall on either side and above and below. And it doesn't matter if it's a little patchy, there's gonna be different types of light and dark shadows and mid-tones hitting the wall from um, the curtains and also the curtains will be covering up a lot of this <clears throat> so it's okay if you've got some streakiness happening in the background don't worry too much about that I'm just going to come in and like even out my lines a little bit add a little bit more blue where I want to I know I don't have to be really perfect or precise about any of this because again we're going to have those curtains camouflaging um, any imperfections and we're just really out to create a feeling and a suggestion here that um, there's a relaxing scene out the window and the light is uh, very welcoming and warm and it's just overall very relaxing and that's kind of what I'm going for with this and I chose uh, really subdued soft pastel tones for the view out the window and kept it really deep and rich all around. This will really create that nice contrast and it helps draw your eye into the center. I'm just coming in with a flat brush here and taking a little bit of white. The blue and a little bit of hints of yellow in there are still a little bit wet, so it's kind of making that really um, kind of like soft streaks. And I like that because you get those wispy looking clouds that start to blend into the sky. Um, and it's kind of nice to work wet on wet because you're able to achieve those skies that have a little bit of movement in them like that and uh, not really any um, big clouds or any clouds really that stand out. But again, you can make um, as many clouds as you want at a rainbow even, that would look really pretty. Um, so be creative guys and let your, your ideas flow. I'm just gonna take a little bit of uh, black cadmium yellow 
little bit of that blue, light blue permanent and create a little base here for my, my ocean or my sea, my little seascape here. And you just want to have a few um, different tones, right? So you've got some soft highlights and soft shadows just for a little bit of uh, contrast down there before we come in with the water. I'm just taking a little bit of white now with some black, maybe a little bit of yellow in there, and I'm going to create more of a 3D effect around the window. Uh, the window sill here, adding a few little diagonal lines. This will really make it look more 3D, and I'm adding more of a highlight here. So I'm really just going to continue around the entire window, all four sides, and continue with those little diagonal lines. And then I'll refine all the lines with more of my black and my magenta on the outside. Okay, so that's all finished and now I'm ready to come in with my turquoise, washed my brush off of course and I'm still using my flat brush here but you can use any brush that you want for your water. And I'm taking a little bit of titanium white with my turquoise and this is a bright aqua green turquoise. There are different turquoises, there, there are ones that are blue based but this one is a green one. Again, feel free to make your water any color that you want guys. So I'm just going to make it a little bit darker on the left side and then pull in and it's going to get lighter and lighter towards the shoreline there where we're going to have soft little waves and foamy bits of a bit of white on a brush and we can really really simply do this by just getting a little bit of white there on the tip of my brush and just start scumbling in traveling around with my brush making little scoops and wiggles and wavy lines like that and then just a soft gentle pull with barely touching the canvas just a little gentle pull like that wet on wet if your paint is dry it'll still work it works either way I want the windowsill to stand out so I'm going to add more of my turquoise paint right here just so that that looks separate and like it's not blending in. I want this to really look 3D. So that's why I went ahead and added a little bit more of the watercolor right there. Now I'm going to take a little bit more of my white, tint it with a little bit of neon orange and I'm just going to add a little bit of that there to create a, a warm um, just a warm sandy tone and you can make your sand any color that you want. You could leave it white as well. I just like to make a, 
I like to tint my whites and I'm gonna add this color to a little bit of this warmth as a highlight for the windowsill as well this will just really help to make that inviting um, to look at and it's, it's nice to create that warmth everything's kind of dark and gloomy ish looking uh, around either side of the window and it's nice to have that uh, contrast of uh, inviting uh, meeting that kind of dark darkness around if that makes sense so we really want this to stand out we want to have our eyes drawn into the center of this painting this is the focal point of course this window and this is a great way to do that I'm going to add a little bit more of that peachy color. Uh, I'm using Holbein neons. I use Holbein uh, in almost all of my tutorials. Whenever you see me use neon paints, those are the brand that I'm using. And you can find them online, though they have been sold out and out of stock lately. But you can get them at certain fine art stores as well. I'm going to make a little bit more color pop right around here. So I'm going in and doing a second layer. Just uh, pure no water at all pure magenta so this is this color is uh, really close to quinacridone violet so either one will work and like I mentioned earlier you could use um, anything any color that you want if you want it to be nice and complimentary and you don't have this magenta or quinacridone violet you could use uh, crimson red even a scarlet red would look nice as long as you're applying it over the dark um, underpainting so it's gonna dry uh, nice and, and rich and a little bit darker than what we've got here. So you won't have to worry about it being too bright and competing with the window. Okay, what I want to do is soften the seashore a little bit. So I'm taking my blue, orange, little bit of white, and I'm just going to just scumble over there. It's transparent, so it's not really, really thick paint. I'm not covering anything up. I'm just sort of making it look a little bit more soft, far away, hazy, and a little bit blurry. And now I'm just going to take a little bit more of my white and add some more bits of waves here, just right up along the seashore. And then with a clean brush, white, a little bit of that uh, neon orange. And I'll look for a full list of colors and brushes below this video in the description, guys. Uh, but this is a, just a little bit of neon orange with a bit of white just for the horizon line here. And then I'm going to kind of go and sweep up on a bit of an angle there. This adds a little bit more um, character to the painting and a little bit of whimsy. I'm going to add a little bit more of my blue in here before we begin the next step. Now before we start working on the people on the beach, I'm just going to add a little bit of that neon orange and white in with that blue just to break up all of that blue there. And then I'm going to wash that brush out and switch over to a number one or a one inch liner brush. And I'm taking a little bit of neon orange and white to start. And it's so far away that we're not going to be able to see all the details of people 
uh, and beach chairs and huts and umbrellas, but we can have a little suggestion that they're down there. So I'm just going to do some little dots and little lines and dabs and maybe try to sneak in a little bit of uh, um, umbrella there. So I'll do a half circle and then some little stripes on it. I'm going to change up my colors. So I'm going to have a few different colors that I'll be using. I'll take um, my magenta with my blue and I'll mix that up with a bit of white after, but now I'm just using a little bit of black, yellow, light permanent blue, neon orange. So pretty much all the colors you see on my palette here, I'm gonna add a little bit of each one of those. So I'll add little lines, sort of on an angle sometimes too, little dots and dabs in the water to make it look like there's people swimming or out there playing. And again, don't um, get intimidated or overwhelmed by this. It's, it's so easy. Just do these little dots and dabs, and it gives you that indication that there's people down there. Once I finish this, I'm going to soften it gently and just pull, to make it look blurry and way off in the distance, just to break that up so it looks uh, really, really blurry. I'll be just pulling with my flat brush once or twice just to and I'll do that barely touching the canvas just to give it a more of a blurry look and set it back in the distance but here I'm just coming in with that pretty color I've made with my light permanent blue and my magenta and white Okay, I really like that how that looks. Uh, I know later on when we add the curtains, it's probably going to disappear, but I like to know that that's going on uh, behind the curtains and, and out there. So now I've got a one inch uh, oval mop brush. I'm tapping into black and yellow to create this green gold color, this really nice earthy olive green color. And I thought it would be fun to add some bushes and some flowers coming in from outside the house and wrapping around and growing into here. I like to add my fantasy twist on things and this is something that I do a lot in my fantasy paintings so I thought I would add this to this painting. And you guys can decide because you might want to do this painting um, and without the curtains and leave it just like this with some flowers and some foliage um, coming in from outside into the room. Uh, it would look really neat like that. Um, or you can incorporate that in a lot of different paintings. Just let this be a source of inspiration for you guys and let you think about maybe some types of paintings you want to do in the future. And you could really, really add a lot of character to your paintings by doing this. Kind of bringing the outside in is a really fun and whimsical way to do that. So just adding a bit of highlight with the cadmium yellow. I'm using cadmium yellow cool. I don't know if I remember to mention if it, if it was cool. It's not a warm one. It's a cool one. Um, a warm one would work as well. The hue will be a, just a little bit different, of course. It'll be more of a, a warm yellow, like uh, have a little bit more of an orange uh, school bus yellow to it. Uh, this is more of a lemon yellow. And now I'm just, so I just did that for a highlight, and now I just scooped off and took off a little bit there uh, so that it looks more like it's 3D coming in from outside and wrapping around, sort of twisting around there. Uh, I've got another mop brush here. This one's just a, 
an angle one and I'm just going to add a little bit more thickness here a little bit more foliage build this up before I come in with some flowers Okay, so this is another makeup brush that I thought would be fun to work with and it really is uh, I would call this a, a short fat little round brush so you could use any thicker round brush you could use any liner brush or round brush actually to make your flowers I'm using um, a thick heavy body paint for this no water I'm not watering it down I'm just scooping up the paint magenta neon red I'll add a tiny bit of white and then I will be scooping up the remainder of my neon orange and using that as well. So I'm going to make my flowers the brightest where the light will be hitting right in the corner there of the window. And then as the flowers get further out towards the edges of the canvas, it's going to be more in shadow. So the colors will be darker, more subdued. I will be coming in with a little bit of my cobalt blue and uh, dabbing that around too. And that will help to create more of a shadow on those flowers. And it's just pretty, I like the magenta and the cobalt blue together. So after adding a few more highlights and shadows in different tones of blue, magenta, and white, a little bit of orange and white, and neon red there on those flowers, I dried it off completely. So this is a few minutes later. And now I'm ready to come in with a very thin white filter here with a flat brush. Want these curtains to feel very sheer and thin and soft, letting that light filter through. So just like when you're painting the dresses, if you guys have been following my tutorials, I've had a lot of uh, female forms with flowy sheer dresses. And this is the same, exact same technique. So you're just gonna do lines and different thicknesses, different angles. Picture, just kind of close your eyes and picture standing in a window with the breeze blowing and think about how how much your curtains are going to be going up and out so it's uh, you guys control the amount of breeze blowing through that window and you can change uh, it up quite a bit from how i'm doing mine or you can follow along uh, with me so i'm going to start to tint my white a little bit as i get closer to the the window opening here i want to create a really warm sunlit glow hitting some parts of the curtain so when i do that i'll be taking a bit of my neon orange as well as my cadmium yellow cool and i'll be mixing that with some white and keeping it more on the thin side still so that it doesn't look too thick and solid i don't want to lose that feeling of that sheer uh, filter of light through the the curtains and sometimes I'm going to kind of just scumble and look like I'm doing little messy brush strokes at the bottom right of the curtain. 
And that was just to create a kind of a bunched up look from the breeze, as well as touches of maybe we've got a little bit of lace work in there. Um, so you can just use the corner of your brush or just kind of scumble around quickly and tightly like that to create that look. I'm gonna create a little bit of a soft blue shadow uh, in between some of these folds and I'll be using my cobalt blue and a little bit of white for that. Okay, I'm going to finish up on this side for now and start over on the left side or start the curtain here on the left side. Now this was a little bit bittersweet for me because I really like the way the flowers look. So if you guys want to leave it like this, definitely go ahead or have the curtain flowing over, leaving a little bit of the, the flowers kind of peeking through um, those sheer curtains, which is also very delicate and pretty. and. Um, I'm going to do the same thing over here. The curtains are going to be going out towards the left side of the canvas though. I'm going to use the same uh, colors, a little bit of cadmium yellow, white, neon orange for that soft warm glow on some of, uh, some of the folds closest to the center of that window where the light would really be, that sunlight would really be casting down on them. And then again, uh, for some shadows in between some of those folds and layers, I'll be using a little bit of my cobalt blue and a little bit of white.
Okay, so this painting is coming along nicely. I'm happy with that soft glow that I've created there through the curtains. And I'm just going to take a little bit of my white and cadmium yellow and just tap, tap lots of little taps. And then I'm going to just pull through and soften this, making it look a little bit more um, blurry again. Doing another little thin um, white, a little tint, bit of a tinted white over on the beach area there. And then right over to the curtains for some final highlights. And I'll... Uh, just a little bit more here. Now this is mostly a little bit of neon orange, yellow, and white, but more white than that. And if you guys are having a, any trouble at all getting this see-through look, it's kind of the same, well it's definitely the same um, technique as when we're making our sun rays. You want to have a diluted uh, amount of paint on your brush, a little bit of water, a little bit of paint, but keep it kind of dry at the same time. So it's kind of one of those things that you really have to practice and get a feel for it. Um, it's hard to, for me to say exactly how much water I have in my brush and how much paint, right? It's, just, it's something that you have to get a feel for and practice, practice, practice. So don't give up, guys. You're doing so amazing. I'm so impressed with all of your paintings that you're sharing on our Facebook group. Keep up the great work, guys. Thanks so much for all your support on my channel. And Patreon, I couldn't do it without you guys. I'm almost at 100,000 subscribers, so thank you all. Have a wonderful day, happy painting, and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye!